Dangerous game isn't unique to one part of the world. Grizzlies roam Canada and Alaska. Water buffalo in Australia and South America pose a threat, but there's no place like Africa. You can have great hunts in any country in Africa, and that country becomes special to you because you create a memory there. You have an experience unlike any other. If you really want to test your mail, if you really want to know what you're made about, you go to Africa. And I guarantee you, once you go, the problem with going to Africa is all you think about is how I can get back there. I've learned more about myself standing in front of elephants at 20 yards than I could have ever learned anywhere else here in America. To me, there's nothing more exhilarating. Knowing that you could be killed, that's the great thing about it. And each country is a little different. Each country presents a different kind of geography or different animals or even a different climate in which you're hunting uh, with the local people. I've never bungee jump, but I don't know that there can be any more adrenaline rush than have a lion charging or Cape Buffalo charging at 20 yards. Africa is the place to go. Of the three countries which stand out, Tanzania, Zambia, Zimbabwe. Hunting there is great conservation for the animals. It's great for the economy to help the indigenous people that are there. The very few countries allowing you to hunt the big five anymore. With the political situation that's in Africa and the way things are shutting down, you're limited to very few places that you can go. Zambia is a hidden treasure for dangerous game. Formal safari hunting dates back to the 1960s. Today, some of Africa's finest professional hunters are moving into this scenic Texas-sized nation of 10 million, drawn by excellent leopard and buffalo. When we were in Zambia, we were with Rand Safaris and we were hunting the Luanga River Valley. We saw everything from big cats to big elephants to big hippo to crocodiles uh, in the river there. It was unbelievable. There was a little bit of a feel of you're in the garden of Eden in terms of the species and the size and the mass of some of the animals that were there in that particular area. Zambia is a, a very hunter-friendly country. Uh, they appreciate the hunting dollars that they generate from wildlife. Sustainable hunting has been a big part of Zambia for, for a lot of years, uh, long before I came here in 75. Zambia's Luangwa Valley is known not only for the beauty of its landscape, but the exceptional size of its leopards. When hunting leopard, a hunter needs to realize he needs to make a good shot because he's putting other people at risk. The professional hunter, the trackers, we're the guys that are going to have to go in there and find that leopard. Leopard hunting, the majority of the time, is all about preparing. So it's a lot of work. It's a rigorous day. You're up basically from dawn till dusk doing preparation, preparation, preparation in the event that you get those couple of minutes where you can actually pull the trigger. Uh, we went in, quietly established ourselves into the blind, uh, got settled as quiet as we possibly could be in there and waited. Blind is set, so now it's just right place, right time. So as we were waiting, we'd been in the blind less than two hours, um, and all of a sudden I hear claws on a tree, and it was like, wow, could this really be happening? And sure enough, that male leopard we'd been hoping to see, it's 4.30 in the afternoon, and he's up the tree beginning to hit the bait. And uh, my heart got going, and um, I could feel my pulse in my ears. Uh, my hands began to quiver a little bit with the excitement that this is really going to happen. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> Zambia is a terrific country. I've enjoyed hunting there. The people are great. The game I harvested there created fantastic lifelong memories for me. Zambia is just a fantastic country to go on an African safari. Zimbabwe is the one African nation in which the Big Five is still within the reach of many hunters. For all of the country's economic and political upheaval, safari hunting is firmly established and looks to remain so for the foreseeable future. The Zambezi Valley is wild, it is remote, uh, the people there are friendly but they're living in primitive conditions. It's a fantastic country. It's just too bad their geopolitical system has been corrupted. It's just too bad that um, you know that country which has such great resources has been squandered. But for hunting, it is still a paradise. Safari hunting not only brings in a steady flow of hard currency, it is a prime source of conservation funding through income sharing plans like the Communal Areas Management Program for Indigenous Resources, or Campfire. 
One of the major problems in Africa today is misunderstanding of what really the hunter brings to that continent. It is estimated currently in the countries where there's still the sport hunting, there are 660,000 jobs. That means you have people that have a purpose. You take care of those people in the villages, you take care of the, the government, not to mention feeding them. When you shoot an elephant, a 12,000 pound elephant, all that meat goes to the villages. A major part of, of uh, management is the hunting of, of really any animals, elephants included, because it gives the animals an economic value. In uh, the 60s, there was 30,000 elephants in the country, and it's now uh, up to 100,000 elephants. And the thing is that with the campfire program, the people are prepared to coexist with elephants because they get the meat, they get the money for the animal clinics, roads, schools, all kinds of things. It's allowed us to be able to manage the elephants in a, in a proper way. Hunting funds conservation. It also helps control problem animals. Game wardens can't be everywhere. And hunters can assist with cattle killers, crop raiders, and man-eaters, winning rural people's support. There's been many, many instances or, or situations where crocodile have got up on people. And these people live in the bush. And they, they, are, they are far more aware of their surroundings than what we are. And the crocodile still manages to get up to them and grab them by the arm or by the chest or the leg or whatever it may be without them having any idea at all. It, this was a really arrogant crocodile that had lost its fear of man and was getting too close. So we decided to shoot this crocodile before anyone got hurt. You put a bait out there and where you've seen one or two, maybe three crocodiles, all of a sudden there's 20. And they're very, very powerful animals. They've got ripping jaws. Um, they, they grab the meat and they belly roll themselves to tear it away and then they gulp it down. Yeah, that's the one. That's definitely the one. Okay, let's shoot him. There's not a lot of margin for error. You've got to hit your target. If you don't, the chances are it's going to wiggle its tail two or three times and that might be all it takes for it to get into the deep current. Now, I always have my main guy, Brown, is always ready with a rope and we run down there as soon as it's safe and we tie that crocodile up. But if it does get in the water, at least we've got a rope around it. Right. It's lucky no one's been taken by this thing. A couple of close ones, but not, no one's been hit yet, luckily. Each hunt in each country does their hunting similar but a little bit different. If you're looking for that old, old school, the type of hunting of the big five that you read about in all the books from 1880 on, you know, Celis and, and uh, those kind of guys, you know, you want to go to Tanzania. Now, Tanzania hunting, I'll tell you up front, is expensive, uh, but they've got a great variety of, of game up there. Twice the size of California. Tanzania is the Africa of Hemingway and Ruark. It is also where the heart of dangerous game hunting beats most fiercely. In the 1970s, Tanzania experimented with a hunting ban, only to see the disaster Kenya's ban became. Today, Tanzania closely monitors, manages, and profits from safari hunting. Tanzania is a fantastic country to hunt. It's very well respected. I mean, I hunted in the Salu in Tanzania, which was wild and, and protected for years and has a great nostalgic around the Salu. With 21,000 square miles of uninhabited wilderness, the Salu is one of the world's greatest hunting reserves. Prices are astonishing, but it's where you go when looking for heritage as well as dangerous game. There is no human habitation in that entire block. It's the biggest wilderness in Africa and one of the biggest in all the world. So there's nothing but the, the rule of nature out here. I mean, it's just the way it used to be. Sweaty, hot, fighting off the TC flies. Um, it's not for everybody, but it's the great way to do it. 
The neat thing about Tanzania is though, you can hunt buffalo and you can shoot two buffalo. Uh, and what's, what a lot of guys like about that is those buffalo up there typically and generally are more wide uh, spread buffalo. They got longer, wide, not as deep as some of those buffalo that are down in, in Zimbabwe or down in South Africa where the curls come way down and then come up. But it makes it great. You can go up there, you can shoot two buffalo. And that's the great thing about Africa. You get to see different opportunities for different animals. These Cape buffalo are dangerous. They probably take out more professional hunters than any other of the big five. Cape buffalo is the animal in Tanzania that is the most prolific and is the most licenses for. And that's just because of the numbers of Cape buffalo that are here. The Cape buffalo, horned death, accounts for some 200 lives every year in Africa, many in unprovoked attacks. Armed hunters are not spared, nor are lions. It's dangerous. I mean, that's what it is. It's, we're hunting dangerous game. And I always tell the client, uh, you want to be looking up and, and looking beyond every bush, every tree. As a professional hunter, you know, I'm the last line of defense and, and I have to protect everybody there, the trackers as well as the, as the clients. So you want to stay in close, keep tight. We were moving in on these Cape Buffalo and it takes some time to get, get in there in these herds and you're working these herds, trying to get in and a situation and pick out a large bull that you'd want to take and all that effort is, you know, typically could be a half an hour or an hour to three, four hours. With buffalo hunting, especially these big herds, is you're kind of getting the wind right, you gotta have it right to get in close. You probe in and you look, and if you see a big bull, you try and get set up. If you don't, you pull back, kind of try another angle, trying to see as many of those animals out of that herd as you can. When you're trophy hunting, that's what you have to do, unless you get really lucky, and that first probe in on that herd, there's a big bull, bull standing there looking at you, but it doesn't happen like that very often. You see that bull there? This area's got a lot of buffalo. Last year we took a bull here that was over 48 inches, so it's a really prime buffalo area. There's a big bull, he's moving across. He's walking up to a calf. Okay, he's coming through the calf now. He's facing us head on. Get on him. No, it's not him. He's moved through, I can't see him. No, he's gone, I can't see him. Off to the far left, I saw this big old bull, and he was obviously the herd bull, because he kept looking around, and he got a little bit nervous, and maybe even smelt us at one point. Jim, there's that bull. Just pick up your gun. Just you see him? You see him through there? That's the good one. Can you see him? Yeah. Jim, that, that bull's turned, he's looking at us, he's broadside. Yeah. But there's a cow watching us, so just be careful. She's looking right at us. Go ahead, take him right on the shoulder. Okay. Here we go. Grab the double. Let's go. Jim, grab the double. Uh, money, take that 375. Okay, let's go. Let's get up on him. Made a great shot. Just stay up here with me. You can hear him there, he's down, you hear him. I was fortunate, made a clean shot where it needs to be, and the bull took the hit, spun around, and ran maybe 40, 50 yards, and rolled up in the shorts and started belling. When they start belling, you know they're all washed up, and he died right there. One shot. 